Hi, everybody. Thank you again uh, for uh, attending this session. So uh, let me quickly introduce myself, and we'll get it started. I know we've started a few minutes late. I was just waiting for people to come in after lunch, because when I checked the registrations, we had a lot more people than are here. But let me quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Kishan Chetan. I'm responsible for uh, sales, marketing, and some of the business process capabilities within CRM. Uh, or Dynamics 365 CRM capabilities. So today what we were hoping to do is to give you an overview of uh, sales effectiveness with Dynamics 365 uh, and Dynamics CRM and give you a sense of what we're trying to do, what are the key th areas that we focus on. And this also includes not only capabilities that are there today, we'll also speak about a few areas that are actually coming uh, in the roadmap over the next few months. So give you a good sense of what it is. We also are very lucky to have uh, Nate here from Amway, who will actually speak about their story as well. So let's actually get that kicked off. I think this is uh, you know, some slides about kind of the key trends. But I think this is something that's consistent. Every, every salesperson I speak to, they consistently say this, and you know, sales teams say this. I mean, I think a few key things are there, and this is perhaps true even for people like us. How often have you actually gone to a retail store and bought something without actually doing a reasonable amount of research? I'm not speaking of like the Coca-Cola that you buy from the retail store, but if you buy anything which is more than a couple of hundred bucks, I suspect most of you have done some good, good amount of research. So that's exactly the same for B2B, B2B, any of the B2B buys. People do a lot more research before they actually go to the seller. So 57% of the people actually have gone through the buying process well in advance before they even go to speak to the supplier. Uh, a lot more stakeholders now. And the reason is you know, there are a lot more people who are involved in any purchase. And it's like in the industry that we are in, uh, in the software industry, we can't just sell to the IT anymore. You have the line of business for sales. And in fact, the line of business marketing impacts sales decisions. So it's complex for us, and it's definitely complex for a lot of our customers. And old things like cold calling or, uh, you know, one, I, I worked in another company before, and the CEO of the company told us that his sales strategy for the longest time was waiting aggressively at the phone. So that kind of strategy doesn't work anymore because it is competitive. You have to actually have to have the right stuff to go and have the right content. So that's one trend that's clearly there. The second trend uh, which is there is that the complexity of the jobs that are there. I mean, if you think of the average salesperson who perhaps was very good at relationships, now has a lot of other things to deal with. They have to understand pricing. They have to understand how people react to pricing. There are a lot of sales organizations which are asked actually asking their salespeople to be what they call the general manager of the account. So it's a lot more than relationships. They actually need to understand what the customer is deploying, what's the business case, how to make the business case. They also, of course, have to do a lot more of the transactional stuff uh, and actually have maybe even pricing calculated, working with different teams. So it, it's become a lot more complex for salespeople. And so sales, as a rule, has actually feels that they've spent a lot more time rather than selling in the tools which help them sell. So almost like 67% uh, of the spend. So this is where I think a key part of our investments are to really uh, empower the salespeople to do more. And if you actually look at kind of the broader mission of uh, Microsoft from our CEO, it's, you know, it's really empowering both people and organizations to do more. And that's our driver. So we actually did a study with, uh, as a part of this particular study. And uh, we found that for large organizations, customers who are using our sales productivity tools, on an average, average users saved about 53 minutes a day. That's for large organizations, about 1,000 or plus users. And 53 minutes a day is, is significant. Think about it. It's, you know, that could be 53 minutes you're spending with your kids having dinner at home or actually selling, whichever one you prefer. Right? So that's why it's, it's significant, and this is a concrete number. So what's top of mind for us from kind of a, uh, for a sales leaders and how we've organized the way we do kind of our uh, business, how we've organized our capabilities? There are three areas. One is kind of staying focused. So essentially do everything that we can do to make sure that the salespeople have the right, uh, right leads to focus on, the right deals to focus on. So focus on the right things. That's a big deal for people who have a, uh, I was reading somewhere that sales has some kind of what's called an interrupt driven system. So they, don't, they can't just do things in a specific order because somebody is always interrupting them to do something else. So if we can help them focus, that's significant. 
The second one is about really about winning faster. And this is really about productivity. How can I help the salesperson to be both productive and intelligent? So can I help them get connected the right way? Can I help them uh, recommend the right products or the right capability set or the right services to their customers? Can I just make them do their job quicker and faster without having to go to 100 places? Can I make them get their information quicker? So it's really about making sure that the salesperson can go and actually win faster. And the last one is a, a little bigger. It's about performance, partly uh, insights and analytics that you get in terms of who's doing well, what, what's working well, what's not working well, which collaterals are working well. But it also includes things like gamification, which is really essentially organizations doing things in such a way that they can incentivize people to compete as well as collaborate at the same time. It's a very kind of fine line in sales organizations. You want people to compete, but at the same time, you want them to work together to close deals. So how do I essentially facilitate that? How do I do the organizational change management that's needed for, in order for me to do that? So that's how we've kind of organized our pillars and how we, are, how we look at the world and how we look at our investments. So before I jump into how Microsoft uh, does this, I have the pleasure of inviting Nate onto stage. Uh, Nate's uh, with Amway, as I mentioned, he's their CRM lead, and I want him to, uh, you know, he's kindly agreed to talk about their experience with Dynamics 365. So Nate, please take it away. Right. Thank you. All right, so first, I'll just give a little background about Amway, if you don't know about it, about us. Um, talk about some of my favorite tiles here. Um, I like the one, uh, 9.5 billion in sales last year. Uh, we do work, a lot of work globally. We work in over 100 countries. Uh, we work in over, I think, 60 languages. Uh, so we're doing a lot of work globally. Uh, things have to work. Um, in a lot of different markets, a lot of different situations. Um, markets have custom needs that we have to configure just for their business rules and maybe certain regulatory environments. So uh, we, have, we use uh, Microsoft Dynamics CRM uh, in several of our different solutions. Um, and Dynamics is really the anchor of what drives all of our customer relationship management. Um, we, we integrate with um, some other products, such as Pitney Bowes Portrait, to, to provide predictive analytics. Um, we work with IntelliDocs um, to provide guided interviews, like if, if you call the calls, call center and you get like a guided interview to walk you through a problem you're having that can help resolve your problem more quickly. Um, we use a product called CRM Gamified uh, that helps uh, incentivize uh, the users to, to do certain actions in the system that we want them to be doing and not things that we don't want them to be doing. Uh, and then we built another custom tool in .NET um, 360. Uh, the idea behind this tool is um, if we're uh, working with one of our customers, we get a complete view of every single interaction they've had with a company, whether that's maybe a training they've taken, whether that's an email, marketing email they've received, whether it's an order they've placed, something they've returned, a product they've bought, everything we can see the full uh, view of each customer. All right. So um, we, one of our, I'll, I'll talk about, we have two different solutions. So the one solution is, is sales focused. So I'll spend more time on talking about that one. And um, Amway has a unique business model, uh, whereas we have uh, 20,000 employees around the world, like full-time employees, uh, but we have millions of distributors that help sell our products face-to-face -to, -face to people. So. It's important that we're mobile first, so we built our sales solution um, to be tablet-based, also work on mobile, um, easy to navigate. Um, that's good. And then the other part of our solution is our customer service side. Um, USD stands for, not US dollars, but um, <laughs> the Unified Service Desk. 
Uh, think of it as if someone's a call, customer service rep sitting in a call center. Uh, they have a desktop computer. They have this thick client called USD, a thick application on their computer. And we can give them more contextual um, intelligence. Uh, say if someone calls in and we recognize the phone number, we automatically validate that you are who you say you are. We can ask you some questions. Um, give you more detail about that specific customer immediately. Uh, and then CRM Gamified is another tool that we use on top of Dynamics. It's a third party tool uh, to help incentivize certain behaviors. Uh, and then the middle bullet there is VOC, a lot of acronyms here. <laughs> so VOC stands for Voice of the Customer. Uh, this is a product, this is a, a recent addition uh, to Dynamics Online uh, to allow uh, to manage surveys all out of the box. So that's out of the box. Uh, it's very nice, so much so. We had a third party vendor in place. We took it completely out in favor of this. It was much better. And we were, we've been able to retire a lot of custom code and just move out of the box to configuration. And then our sales support side, this is our solution I talked about, mobile first. So um, if I'm a distributor and I sell a lot of, a lot of goods, um, I'm going to get assigned a sales advisor or an account manager from Amway, from one of our full-time employees, to help that person build their business and to help them set goals, to identify opportunities within their business and work directly with them to help them grow their business. And talked about ABOs when I mentioned distributors. This stands for uh, Amway Business Owners. So just uh, want to fill in that acronym there. And future plans. Uh, going forward, we, we love Dynamics Online. We're looking forward to some new features coming in the fall release. Um, we're all about omni-channel. We need it to work on any device, whether it's web, mobile, tablet. Um, we've got some future plans to integrate with, um, I don't know if you've seen these little robots in Japan. You go to a store, you walk up to the robot, you can ask it questions and it can answer back to you. We have plans in the works uh, for some of our stores in Asia. Um, in, we're pretty big in Asian markets. It's about 80% of our sales, so we sell a lot of um, air purifier systems, water purifier systems. And say if someone purchases a water purifier system, they get someone to come to their home, install it under their sink. So that's kind of a tie in to field service. That's the next feature we're looking to implement. Um, we love Microsoft's acquisition of Field One. It was the leading product. We were about to spend a lot of money to buy that product. And then Microsoft bought it, <laughs> so we got it for free. So it's, it's a great solution. Um, talking about social, en social engagement, um, being able to have someone uh, tweet at us. Uh, if they have, they're having an issue, they can tweet at us and immediately open a case, and we can address it um, before it becomes a bigger issue. Things like that. Um, customer self-help, uh, we want to more standardized globally, how um, you can just go to Google search or whatever your local search is. You can go search, find your answers, and maybe not even have to open a case. So we found in, um, I think it's in our, yeah, in our Chinese market that just by opening this ability, they're using WeChat, real big over in China. So just by having this ability, they've decreased their call center calls enormously and been able to handle a lot more volume uh, via, via those channels. And again, we're looking to customize the interaction when you call. Um, if, you, if your credit card is expired, um, we can update that for you. Um, if, if there's a new product that we think you might like, we can ask you about that. So at that point, then um, customer service moves from a cost center to a profit center. So, there's some opportunities there we're looking at uh, to take advantage of. So that's all. I'll turn it back. Thank you so much, Nate. 
the reason why I, I wanted Ambit team to talk about it is, uh, in addition to having a more of a regular Salesforce automation, what I really liked about the Ambit story is the end-to-end. -end. If you actually looked at, uh, you know, I, I worked at uh, Siebel and I worked at SAP in the past and have been in this a area for about 15 years. When we started off as Salesforce automation, it was predominantly focused on ensuring that managers had visibility into what their salespeople were doing. It was about tracking pipelines. It was about tracking visibility. But what's great about the Ambit story is increasingly how much you sell is not determined by how much pipeline your salespeople have logged. It's also determined by how informed they are. It's informed by how good your marketing web websites are and how easily you can get the right content in the hands of the right people. It's determined by how good your service is because if you have a bad call center experience and if you have the guy who posts something on Twitter about a nasty phone call experience, it's not going to help you. And it also depends on how your field service is because as you said, you go to some, you have an air purifier or a water purifier, you go and need to fix it and you determine that, hey, you can actually upsell something. Somebody who's fixed it well can actually sell better. And that's the driver for us. The goal for us to bring a lot of our capabilities into the Dynamics 365 platform as an integrated platform is exactly that. Because we feel that before organizations used to ask, kind of operate in silos, and that was fine. You, you had to tune your sales force. You had to get them organized. You had to get them incentivized. That's all good. But you lost a lot of these kind of cross-sell opportunities where doing your service better actually drove a lot of sales. It kind of makes sense, common sense-wise, but service was always this like you know cost center operation run somewhere else. Nobody actually thought of giving the service team actually some revenue targets, which you can because you can actually move it from a cost center to a profit center. So those are the kind of things that are important to us. And as you can see uh, the rest of the presentation, we won't focus on just one silo. You can actually see where it kind of becomes integrated with the rest of uh, you know, kind of what we have in the Dynamics 365 family. So let me go ahead and jump to the next slide. So on the stay focused aspect, here we are really going to fo focus a lot more on how do we get the right leads in the hands of the salespeople? How do we make sure that they have the right information when they have those leads? So that's kind of the areas that we wanted to focus on here. So if I clicked into it, and let me just build this out. Uh, I'll, I'll look, do a lot of you know what Microsoft social engagement is? Okay, uh, maybe a couple of people. But you know, social engagement was typically around social listening, started off for the service teams to like see what people are saying about your products and services on the social, are they positive or are they negative? But what it, it's become is it's become much more than just social listening. It's become a lot more around understanding who are actually interested in buying your products or services and actually having that integrated to CRM. And that's why the reason why I put it in here is making sure that enabling social as a channel for prospect and lead generation is becoming increasingly critical in addition to the traditional channels. Uh, so the, another aspect of social is that one is identification of you know, leads from social. The second is understanding more information about the lead. So this is where we have a third party inside view which we OEM and it's available as a part of the product. A uh, couple of the customers who uh, we'll speak about later also use it. And here the kind of the, the scenarios are to find the right prospects. So help me find prospects in this specific industry. Or if I'm targeting an account, help me find the right contacts within the account who are actually connected to me through my colleague or through my classmate, things like that. right? And it's really about understanding more about the customer, listening to all of the aggregated news, and kind of getting connected. We'll actually show this to you. And they've also released a, an updated version of their uh, insights, nicely integrated into Dynamics 365. I think the, the way the UI is integrated and the way it flows actually is very, very nifty. So we spoke about social engagement. This is another area which is not there today, but something that the team is working on introducing, uh, which is essentially having social selling capabilities. One of the key things, if you realize, especially if you're selling products that require people to research, and if you remember my first point, 57% of the people have already done some research before they come and talk to your salesperson. Sharing relevant content to them about your products, especially if you're a salesperson with a relationship who, who they actually know and trust, 
then it's really, really effective. And especially if that content is actually even coming from a third party, somebody who's an influential blogger writing about your product, for example, and you sharing as a salesperson with somebody is effective. And that's where social selling comes in. Where in your mobile app, you have the ability to kind of find different relevant pieces of article. This is surfaced to you based on your interest, what you flagged based on the keywords that you've set, that you can actually go and share with your various contacts. So it's really about, or share also, of course, on your social profile to amplify the content. So it's really about helping use social and the information in social to amplify the message that you're typically doing in your regular selling uh, aspects. So let me do one thing. Uh, so before I do that, one more uh, aspect is this is something that we are uh, enabling in the product, and it'll be available in Dynamics 365 very soon. And if you looked at uh, any B2B scenarios where business to business selling, event management actually tends to be the biggest marketing spend or the biggest spend. And quite a few events are actually not even done by marketing. So if you look at an e event like Ignite, which is really large, absolutely, that's a, that's a marketing driven event. But there are several events which are sales driven. So if you look at financial services sector, there are a lot of events that you do for your high net worth clients. You as a sales rep will bring them in. If you're in a public sector, you might do a small soiree for 200 people, and that's an event you have to manage. You have to manage the invitations, you have to manage the reminders. And it's very important for uh, sales as well, in addition to marketing, to manage it. That's why we've enabled, uh, we'll enable end-to-end -end events to be able to do the logistics of the event, set up the event, manage who the speakers are, who the sponsors are, uh, have an integration to On24 if you want to do a webinar as well as have a full-blown event portal based on the portal technology in CRM so that people can actually uh, register for the event, check what are the sessions in the event, and go and register. So again, another place, another way to make sure that you have the right leads and you've generated the right leads that you've all also nurtured with your events. So let me show a couple of these things in a demo before I go into some of the other aspects. Hopefully you should see my screen. Perfect. So this is uh, Microsoft Social Engagement. And uh, let's speak. think of the scenario. Uh, just most of the scenario that we'll be speaking about is going to be about a company which is selling uh, 3D printers or marketing and selling 3D printers. So you'll see a lot of kind of content around that. So that's the background story. So now from a 3D printer perspective, I'm actually trying to identify new leads or people who are interested in understanding about 3D printers. So I could actually, in social engagement, set up search topics, uh, you know, different search topics. Let's actually go into uh, 3D printers as a search topic. So this actually tells me that, you know, overarching things like, you know, the sentiments by and large positive. Uh, there have been like 74,000 posts. Uh, this is where the posts have come from. Uh, a couple of few, few key things that I wanted to highlight. So most of the social vendors do things like sentiment, whether, whether they think what you're saying is positive or negative. We have very good differentiated capabilities in that we can do sentiment on a native language. So we don't have to translate German into English and do sentiment. We can actually do sentiment natively. Uh, however, the other thing which is interesting is that we also have enabled intention. This was uh, a few months ago that we've actually released this, which uses machine learning and advanced analytics to not only detect whether somebody is positive or negative, but it will also detect whether people have certain intent. So are they looking for information? Are they looking to purchase? Or are they actually looking for support? Now, at any point of time, I can click on any one of these. So I'm looking at, for example, uh, in, intention to purchase. And I can actually go and look at the raw tweets. I can actually see you know, the different tweets. You know, somebody wants to buy a 3D printer and more buy more to build more 3D printers. So interesting, something anecdotal. Uh, and the other one is about like, you know, how do I buy 3D printers online? So at any point of time, I can actually go click in here. And I can go and send this as a lead to CRM if I wanted to. So directly from here, of course, I could do this manually. I could go create leads and source leads in CRM. Or I could actually do it in a more automated manner. So I could actually go in here and look at my automation rules and uh, go and, in this case, check a specific automated rule, which sends a lead if a few criteria are satisfied. And the criteria that are is that, hey, somebody's the, the machine learning based intent is about purchase and that somebody that who has actually 
wanted to purchase something as a fairly high reach, so you have a little bit more of an amplification, amplification effect if that person actually buys it and says something good. So one way of essentially generating or sourcing or augmenting your leads uh, using social. So not just the listening, integrate into CRM to generate leads. Another example where we use kind of social or the information is where we use the information uh, in inside view. So this is again Dynamics 365 Dynamics CRM. Uh, let me go in and given 3D printers, I'm going to go look at HP Incorporated. Uh, if you don't uh, you know, know or read the news recently, HP of course split, that's been some time back, but they also bought Samsung essentially to get the 3D printers business, so they really want to get into 3D printers in a big way. A uh, few key things, so if I actually, uh, if it wasn't for inside view, I would actually have not got things like this logo here. Uh, I have a whole bunch of information like their address, I have their revenue, I have the number of employees, so all of this information coming from their database. So let me actually go and make sure uh, I, I've logged in again as a different user, so I need to go set this one up. Uh, This is a one-time setup, so it should not actually happen every single time. Uh, so now that it's been set up, so let me go back to my accounts. And you can actually see now that you have the insights information. So you have things like, uh, you, you know, you can add things to your watch list. You can synchronize data from, you know, the database here, all of their data. You can go and, you know, if it's an internet company, you can go and edit it. So it's a nice widget within Dynamics 365. In addition to that, you actually have this, uh, like a very immersive page. This is actually uh, iframing that particular application within Dynamics 365, but the way it's done is fairly native. Uh, you can find out you know, multiple insights about this company. You can do some research, and research includes things like uh, you know, some basic company profile, who are the similar accounts, but and actually a very detailed financial data as well that it's acquiring from different sources. So I can actually, let's say, go click in on my financial data, and I can see all of the SCC filings, the, all of the revenue, all in one place from CRM, no navigation. You have all of this information to further qualify people, right? Now let me go in and go back. One of the things that you know sales like to do a lot is to like really find contacts, right? That's the most Im important thing. So I could go in here and find how am I connected to, for example, to this particular salesperson? How am I connected through LinkedIn? So, this lets me kind of look at uh, the different contacts. I can, for example, do some searches. So I can actually say, hey, find me the CEO of this company. And I can actually see some information, maybe some uh, history of this person. So all of this information available at our fingertips. Now, as you know, we've, not, we've made not so small a purchase in LinkedIn. And that's another area where all of this information will start coming in and helping enrich uh, CRM. As we close out the deal, towards the end of the year, we'll actually start sharing more roadmap details about how we're going to integrate that. But they have uh, strong capabilities for sales, particularly in terms of the Sales Navigator product, which actually has a lot of synergies with what we have at Dynamics 365. It's already integrated. We have a more of a soft iframe type integration today, but that's something that we are planning to extend significantly going forward. So if you've seen this demo, you've started off with generating prospecting leads on public social, augmenting the leads with information from qualified databases like your Dun & Bradstreet's and all of that data, and using that right within your CRM for your salesperson to get more information about your contacts, about your leads, even update and make sure that their data quality is good. So that's where focus really helps to make the salesperson more focused on the right things. So let me switch back to my presentation after the short demo. So the second section uh, is really about kind of winning faster. It's about being having the right insights and being more productive. That's what this particular section focuses on a lot more. And I'd say this is where customers see a lot of benefit uh, with Salesforce automation as well. So finding leads is very important for salespeople. But what, again, they also think about is how does the system help me? And that's where making them more productive, making them get access to the information they need to to close the deal is actually super important for the salespeople. So if you looked at kind of the overarching sales productivity that we have, if you looked at it end to end, all the way from 
you know, uh, receiving a bunch of emails. Emails is still a very, very critical channel for sales. Tracking the email and associating it to a, making a contact out of it, making a lead out of it, associating it to an opportunity. Uh, you can do phone calls directly from here. You can go call up your lead from here. Uh, you can go collaborate on Yammer or Office Groups uh, as a sales team. You can take notes in typical OneNote, have that associated with your lead or your opportunity. You can create uh, proposals. You can discover content or documents. So if you looked at the typical end-to-end -end flow, all of that's where Office is super critical and super important. This is actually uh, a very, very key integration points. Uh, over like 15, 20 years of doing a CRM, one of the key things that I've noticed always is with CRM systems, you're not competing necessarily with another CRM system when it comes to adoption inside the company. Most of the times you're competing with an Excel, you're competing with a Word, because that's what users are comfortable with. They, they see value in it. And that's where we said, you know what? It's not about competition. It's about figuring out which workflow makes most sense in which tool. So if I want to do pipeline analysis on all of my opportunity data, Excel is perhaps the best tool for it. So let's embed it right there. If I want to take notes, Excel's perhaps not the right tool for it. So let's put it in one node that's associated with, uh, with Dynamics 365. So that's kind of the premise of thinking about how we've integrated it into our flow. Uh, as I mentioned right in the front, people do a lot of research. So that means salespeople need to be informed, your customers need to be informed. So if you looked at sales content management, which is significant for sales, I mean, without having the right content, it's really hard for uh, sales to actually you know, help sell, of course, for customers to figure out. So if you looked at our end-to-end -end kind of content story, uh, Dynamics with Office 365 has like a really good strong footprint here. So all the way from creation, where you can create different types of content, Office 365 clearly is pervasive. Uh, we have portals uh, in, uh, in Dynamics 365 to be able to create web type content. Uh, you have multiple ways of storing this data, SharePoint, OneDrive, depending on what you choose. You have multiple ways of collaborating, depending on what's needed. Yammer for more uh, transactional type collaboration. For more team-based collaboration, you have office groups, which works really embedded into the CRM. And then you have to discover this content somehow. And that's where we have built a document recommendation service based on rule-based recommendations. And then on top of it, we also have Dell, which provides more of intelligence-based recommendations. So essentially using machine learning, using understanding what people in your office graph are uh, reading as the right recommendation. So a combination of these recommendations is super powerful. And the last but not the least is making sure that this content gets out, so distribute the content. And that's where our portal comes into play. Somebody can go in a self-service portal and download a help page. Somebody can go and send this via an email blast. Or you can actually get, from an employee perspective, you can get this content both on your mobile app all of our uh, document recommendations, all of our capabilities, SharePoint integrations, et cetera, is there on the mobile app, as well as, of course, on the web. So that's like truly end-to-end -end sales content. And if you actually look at the landscape out there, there are players who essentially do one of these very well. And in some cases, even the competition really would need to kind of integrate with this. So that's where the end-to-end -end in terms of productivity comes in a big way. So let's click into that a little bit. Uh, SharePoint integration, clearly a very important aspect. What we've done here is that you can access and manage kind of your SharePoint documents directly within Dynamics 365 or CRM. Uh, it's the, the complete document library experience, but it actually looks and feels like it's actually a CRM grid. It's a very native grid display, and it's server-to-server -server communication. It be, enable integrations between our on-premise to SharePoint Online or or online to online, all of the four combinations that are possible essentially between on-premise, online, and SharePoint as well. The other aspect of document is recommendation. So for example, let's take a salesperson who's working on a specific opportunity, and there's an admin who's configured similarity rules which basically say opportunity one is similar to opportunity a and B. And again, this is not something that you'll set up per opportunity, but you'll actually set up rules which say, hey, if the topic of the opportunity is the same, or if they are opportunities of the same industry, or do these opportunities belong to similar accounts, that's where you can actually use these rules to drive similarity. Excuse me. And the idea is using the similarity rules to be able to find documents which are associated with all those other opportunities which make sense for you to get surfaced. So for example, if you're selling a product 
to a financial services industry, and there's another opportunity where they found that a few documents were super effective, actually it'd be great for the salesperson to have access to that specific document right away, instead of actually going and asking a few people about email. So that's where the recommendations comes in, to actually have the right content in the right place. Then the next is, you know, sales teams, especially in the more complex selling type scenarios, tend to be very, very global, could be, or could be global, could be functional. Uh, if I'm selling a complex product, I might have my sales team might have one person who's a demo expert, somebody from the services team, somebody pro potentially from the product team. So it tends to be a very complex one. So how do I collaborate uh, among the teams, especially some uh, of those employees who are who are not CRM users? So if you are asking an R and D guy a question about some product feature and that's needed to sell you don't necessarily have to give the R&D person access to your CRM. You perhaps just want them to answer a specific question or get access to the office group. So that's where you might have collaboration outside of CRM, but you want that reflected in your CRM so that when you go in there, you have access to that as well. And that's where office groups comes in super handy. This is an area that we'll be showing, we'll be speaking about it uh, in the productivity session in more detail, so make sure that you check that out. But this is a, a capability set that will be available fairly soon. And this is really about harnessing the power in the office graph, especially on your email area, to drive more value inside CRM. So it includes things like automatically capturing information that you have in your email and showing it as cards in CRM so that you can follow up on it. Or in the future, going into the future, even updating data. I mean, it, what if you have something in your signature and you'd love to update your contact if the title has changed, right? So think scenarios like that. The second is around email engagement. Uh, marketing automation or, or campaign management, people have done this for a while, where they can actually understand how many people click the email, when did they click it, when did they open it, but it's actually tools which are not available uh, for the sales rep. And this is where now those type of tools will be available to the sales rep. So if you sent out an email to 10 of your contacts, I can actually know who has opened that email, did they open the link, did they click on the link, and then you can actually start setting up some workflows to say, hey, if they haven't actually opened up in three days, maybe email's not the right channel. Maybe I should actually call them up, or maybe I should try and go meet them in person. So those are the insights that kind of come with this. The third one is around analytics. And here we have various measures for what we call relationship health. Uh, so imagine that you're, you think that you're gonna close a deal in the next two weeks, and usually towards the last two weeks of a deal closing, you tend to have a lot of email activities around contract exchange, et cetera. And you don't have those email exchange, maybe you're really not closing the deal in two weeks. Right? So how do I use the email information to be able to go and then understand if my particular deal, especially a large deal, is at risk because of the fact that there's not enough interactions. And then we have an assistant, which is on your mobile, we'll show a little bit of that, so that you, all these insights actually surface on your mobile. So this is the power where the office graph is really lighting up in Dynamics 365 CRM. And as I said earlier, the LinkedIn graph and bringing in some of those professional network is clearly something that we'll do. Right now with the Sales Navigator product, there's a light integration, but that's something that we expect to enhance as we start closing the deal. So we, so far we kind of spoke about you know, uh, making the people more productive, getting them access to information that's an email, but for running a world-class sales organization, especially in a repetitive fashion, What's critical is having good business processes, especially with industries which are, you know, have large teams, large sales forces, doing the same things over and over again has a higher probability of success. And this is where we've really spent a lot of effort in uh, providing more kind of meat into reimagining the business process. So we'll have a very easy to use designer, I'll actually show you a little bit of that, to build out any business process you want, complex business processes, simple business processes. You have the ability to do what we call automation or compositioning. So that means if you have a five stage business process and somebody is at the develop stage and they moved out from the develop stage, maybe I should actually send a work, uh, an email through workflow or add a task to somebody to go do a follow up. Or maybe I should not let them go out of the stage unless I have some information. So the ability to kind of guide your salesperson and guide them through best practice business processes and 
kind of help them out is one key thing. The other thing is intelligence, where we've enabled the ability to have recommendations directly in your business process. So for example, if you want to recommend to your salesperson that if they have one product, you should also perhaps add product B, that's a recommendation that will be surfaced directly in the UI, and the user can actually then act on it. So they can say, hey, go do it. That actually goes and applies that recommendation directly. Uh, we'll have a lot of kind of Power BI capabilities visualizations. Hopefully, we'll show a little bit of that so that you understand. So with this, what we're doing is we're making the salesperson productive. We're providing best practice business processes so that it's not just one person who's productive. The entire organization is doing it in a consistent manner. And then, you know, last but not the least, it's about mobility. Pe I mean, you spoke about Amway. They've designed everything mobile first. So that's a key kind of premise for us as well, to design our applications with mobile. And this is where we're doing investments. We'll actually show this live uh, in the product as well, where we're enhancing further the mobile app that we have. We already have uh, a set of mobile apps, which are build once, deploy everywhere. So you do the configuration once, and it's available on your iOS phones, tablets, phones, Android, and of course, Windows devices. But we're enhancing that further to have a very easy to use landing page, uh, where you can go click into data, see, visualize the data in a very easy manner, as well as uh, you know, look at it in kind of a more productive manner where a lot of data is visible at the same time in a more stacked manner. And I'll actually show this to you in a demo so that you, you can actually see this in play. So let's do a demo right now so that you know, we've done a lot of slides. So I just want to make sure that you also get a, got a good sense of what are the capabilities in the product on this area as well. Let me switch over. Hopefully, that doesn't actually restart my browser because they've applied a, an update. Uh, so this is, <laughs> it always happens in a live demo, right? Uh, so this is Dynamics uh, CRM. But before I jumped into Dynamics CRM, I wanted to show you one thing. This is Office 365 email, but I could actually do this with, uh, we have similar integrations into the iOS Accompli, what used to be called Accompli, but the Outlook app on the iOS mobile as well as uh, similar integrations. There are some differences based on what each app supports, but uh, definitely similar integrations in the Outlook itself where we can have a, a CRM app with an Outlook. Now, right within here, uh, I'm looking at an email, again, about 3D printers, and somebody's wanting to have a meeting. I can actually go in right here and bring in this plugin of CRM and bring in relevant uh, CRM data from uh, you know what, within the Outlook, you can actually go and uh, look at this particular data within Outlook. So just give it a second for uh, downloading. It usually takes a second for the first time. And what this does is it actually says this particular email is tracked against this specific entity. Uh, these are kind of related. So there are some recent cases here. There are some recent opportunities. And let's say I don't want to track it against this, but I want to track it against something else. I could actually go track this email in CRM against, let's say, this is from Northwind. Let's actually see what, what else is there with Northwind. And what this is doing is it's actually doing a query against CRM and getting me all of this uh, leads associated with Northwind or opportunities or contacts, everything associated with Northwind. And I could actually, at any point of time, go create uh, a new record if I wanted to and associate it with that email. So what it does is it provides me very good kind of lightweight access to CRM directly with an email. I mean, people spend a lot of time with an email. Don't discount the amount of time everybody spends with an email. I mean, all of us know that we, we do that, that as well. So this provides you CRM lightweight way directly within CRM, uh, within your email as a plugin. So now let me go into CRM itself. Now, let's say I'm a salesperson. I want to look at all of my opportunities. I want to kind of get a sense of what my pipeline looks like. And this is where I said, you know, this is something that before what somebody would have done is they would have downloaded this to Excel and they would have done some analysis with it. But what we've done is right within the tool, we've provided the ability to go and look at all of the CRM data that I just saw as a part of Excel, right? So I can actually just go in here and go look at all of my data in Excel. So I can look at my opportunity pipelines. And these are templates that you created. These are pre-created templates that you can provide 
to your organization. So I can look at my pipeline, I can look at my win loss, I can you know, understand which campaigns are they from, and then I can actually look at uh, even the raw data. And you know, the nice thing is it actually says things like, hey, this is a whole number, you know, the minimum value is this and that, and the, the biggest problem with Excel is once you export it, people make some changes, and when you try to import it, it's a mess. Like, it's a, usually a data quality mess. But what we are trying to do is apply the same business rules so that your, your teams don't have to deal with that again, right? So. Thank you. No, that excellent. That's actually great to get uh, feedback from you know actual users who are using this. This is excellent. So now i you know that's how I could do some pipeline. Now let me actually go into a specific opportunity itself. Now let's go in on the same Northwind, the same one which we saw email about. I could actually go click into that opportunity, and this is where I start getting information. So I have this business process which is like this multi-stage business process. It actually says which stage I'm in, things like that. So you, you have a whole bunch of functionality around it. And this is something that we've enhanced quite a bit, and I'll actually show you how the business process designer looks like as well. One thing you'll notice is that you have collaboration right in here. So you have collaboration in context of your specific opportunity. So you can actually go collaborate on Yammer. You can ask questions about like a specific proposal. You can get answers, et cetera. The other thing that you have is, uh, is integration with OneNote right from here. And you can actually go in and go open your OneNote as about the specific opportunity. So let me actually go click through and see what's in that OneNote. Uh, so I can actually see the fact that you, know, you, are, you have like, there was a meeting before about this OneNote. There were some you know, things about the 3D printer defined. There were some top three things. There are some important things we should do, like close all cases out. And this kind of reinforces the point that I said earlier. You can't sell unless you have good customer service. And that's where everything working together kind of makes, uh, makes sense. Now, in addition to like, the typical productivity, we've really enabled kind of uh, integrations as well. So this is LinkedIn, but let's come back to that in a little bit. We've enabled intelligence. So for example, typical opportunity, you have one, one or more products. So let's actually go in and say that I'll actually ask the system to suggest. And this is where we've enabled machine learning capabilities where you can actually look at your historical order data, you can look at your historical information, and then actually determine what should be ordered where. And this is really about, really about ensuring that you know, all of your historical learning is enabled in your machine learning. And we can make that more sophisticated. And we have numerous customers who've taken uh, even either the machine learning models we have or built their own machine learning models where it becomes more sophisticated as, as you have more and more external data, the ability to do these type of models for recommendations becomes more critical. And that's where you saw an example where we had recommendations in the business process where you can recommend additional products or additional capabilities. You have recommendations directly within the opportunity for adding more products. So our goal is that you know there will be companies will have advanced machine learning and data scientists doing it. Our goal is where it makes sense in the process, we will enable it for you. So you saw three examples today in the demo already. Uh, one with social engagement where we had the intent of the post being determined by machine learning. You saw another example of uh, the recommendations right now by machine learning. So those are the type of examples where we've really brought machine learning to fore. Uh, we also have lead scoring, lead uh, you know, opportunity scoring based on machine learning algorithms. So that's where bringing in machine learning really helps us kind of do uh, these end-to-end -end scenarios. Oh, wrong one. Another aspect of productivity is uh, now that you, know, you, have, you have this particular one, typically if you look at, remember an opportunity cycle, you actually have an opportunity, you go create a quote, you know, we create quote from the order line items, et cetera. The thing that is important also in a quote is the ability to you know, generate a quote template. Very critical, 
you know, takes, takes some effort to do it and having the right kind of professional template. And this is just a quick example where you can have a formatted template where it gets data directly from that entity. So like, for example, you know, your price, your quantity, your discount percentage. So you can build, of course, a lot more complex code template. You can add your terms and conditions. You can do the typical formatting, which is very standard. And again, I realize some of the customers uh, here and some of your businesses might require a lot more complex uh, you know, pricing and quoting capability. We absolutely acknowledge that. We understand that there are industries where you have complex pricing, complex quoting. And that's why we have multiple partnerships that we've established with companies who are totally spe specialized in CPQ, the area of CPQ, uh, or contracting pricing quoting. And we, of course, there, there are companies natively built on, uh, minute, rather, natively integrated with Dynamics 365 and absolutely happy if you have questions to point, point to one or more. But for companies which have more lightweight quoting experience, that's something definitely that you can do directly from the product itself. So now uh, that we have this, let me switch over for just a second and actually show you uh, some of the process capabilities. So I was just having problems with the demo. I'll just check if that still is the case. Let's try. I'll give it one try. And these are like development bits. So there you go. So it's still apparently not fully there. So let me actually go into contacts. Okay. Apparently not. So this is not my day to show that specific demo. But what I did want to show is I wanted to show the enhancements to the business process flow uh, or the kind of the business process orchestration capabilities. And what you see here is a very visual UI way of helping customers build out their business processes. So I can actually go in and look at the full business process. If I have a very complex business process, I have a view here. And what this business process is really saying, it's a financial services. Now, now I have a slightly different scenario. It's a financial services sales process. So the process starts off with trying to know more about your customer. So that actually includes a bunch of things. So I want to know what their first name is, what their last name is, what their email is, and if they're a corporate account, right? And then after that, what I want to see is if they're interested in a corporate account, then you know if the, the value is yes, then they essentially we send them on one path. If they're not a corporate account, we just, you know, we don't care about creating some information about their account, but we actually directly go and you know, send them to an opportunity, which is more about you know, selling them a more of a personal account. Now, for each one of these, you can see that there are some details. What are the steps? What are the workflows? Uh, for some of these, it can actually get a little more complicated, right? and that you can have multiple steps. But a key thing that I wanted to make sure that I highlighted, if you typically go through this end-to-end -end process, is that some of these steps even have things like the ability to do workflow. So this is very important. So remember, once I, what I can do here is I can actually say that within this particular stage, these are the different steps within that stage. And I could actually trigger a workflow within the stage when somebody enters this stage. So imagine all of the things that you could do with automation where you have this best practice business process. So if somebody enters the stage, you automate, you kind of drive a workflow. If they exit a stage, you drive a workflow. If somebody's closed a process, finished the process, or abandoned the process, you can drive workflows. So this provides you a ability to really get into like fine details of how things are working, what steps in your process is not working, and make sure that all of your organizations follow the same process. While we're speaking about this from the perspective of sales, like from a selling, it's as applicable in a service scenario where you want your service rep to do three things, right? I want them to check my knowledge base articles. I want them to go finish something on a call, and I want to close this out, or a call center process. So everything which has, like, you want people to follow a best practice process, you can actually do that right in here in one place easily. And this whole thing is designed to be uh, drag and drop, easy to build. So for example, let's say I wanted to add one stage in between here. Uh, let me actually bring that up right in here. So I can actually just build in a stage. It's a new stage. It inherits some data because the previous stage was opportunity. Uh, and if I wanted to add some things here, so let's say I wanted to add some steps here. I can add, uh, let's say, one more new step. Huh. 
So I can add a new step. I can add, you know, maybe yet another step right here. Uh, so drag and drop ability to add step. I can set some name of the step if I wanted to. I can add a workflow here. I can say, hey, when somebody enters this stage, make it possible for me to uh, add a workflow. So I think that could be based on, let's say, in this case, stage exit. I can go in and say, find me all the workflows here. So let me find a workflow. And again, automatically, based on which entity you are, it actually finds the right workflow for you. Now, if you remember in our, uh, in our configuration, uh, in our different uh, business process in Dynamics 365, you have the business process flow, which is more what the end user faces and what the end user is defining their business process around. And then we also have what we call portable business rules. So that's really about business rules that get triggered on various actions. So for example, if somebody updates a field, you could execute that rule. And as a consequence of that rule, you could do things like setting something as read-only, you could update another field, you could inactivate things, so you could actually set another value. So even the portable business rules have the same user interface. Even the task-based experience, which is there in CRM, so an ability to define easy, to, uh, like essentially guided task flows for users to finish a specific task. So for example, if I'm updating contact information, always update three fields. So those are also modeled using the same uh, designer. So what it does is it provides you a very easy way of building out customized business process flows. So in general, uh, from a roadmap perspective, anything which is workflow or automation related, you will actually start seeing more of that in this type of interface in the system. Heavily driven a little bit more towards the business analyst, but what it does is uh, it removes the hindrance of adding new business process and testing with it. And our belief is that the business process depth that we have and enabling our customers to have like very customized business processes is, is very important because that's really, the dif in some sense, the difference about how well they can execute from a sales or any other perspective. So let me actually go and, uh, so of course you have things like, uh, one of the other things that we've typically heard is the ability to do things like snapshots. If you created a best practice business process, you really want the ability to actually look at this, put it on a PowerPoint, share it with everybody. Hugely important because that's how you kind of socialize these processes. So we have capabilities like that directly out of the box. Um, so the business rules, I was actually hoping to show that, but the demo seems to have, uh, the demo gods are not against me on that one. Let me see one last way of actually doing that. So I, this was not what I was hoping to, uh, the flow I was hoping to go, but I just still wanted to see if I could actually bring that up. Yeah, so if I went to, uh, da, 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 da. and really what I'm showing here here is very, uh, very focused on, uh, I'd say more of an administrator type business rule, uh, user, but I just wanted to make sure that you actually saw the capabilities that we'd enabled. Oh, it's not the contact entity, so let me actually go in. It perhaps is the opportunity entity. So, so if you actually look at this, Exactly same interface for building your, uh, you know, uh, business rules. So you could actually say here, if you're checking account balance, if your checking account balance is greater than ten, then show this particular recommendation. And if somebody accepted that recommendation, then set this other field value to yes. So again, same idea, which is in a very visual way, you build up a complex flow. You could add different actions. Actions could be a recommendation, something which pops up in the UI for the user or it could be locking a specific thing, showing an error message, setting a specific field value, or making something required or not. Again, really about automation providing kind of best practice business processes that you can drive across your organization here. So those were the aspects that I quickly wanted to demo. And last but not the least,
I wanted to see if I could go and show this. Now, the another thing that we've done is what we've realized is a, this process and the area of process is something that people are using very heavily. And what we did is we enabled it as a part of the CRM entity structure so that you can start building uh, dashboards on it. So this is an example where I can look at all of the different processes I have and I can understand who are there at which stage, how long is it taking. So let me click on the financial service sales process, for example. I can actually see that this one has uh, four steps. You know, One is closing a deal, one is about structuring the exact same process that we just I, I walked you through, which is like knowing your customer, organization information. So this tells me how many processes are actually running right now, which ones are at which stage. I can click through on this uh, to understand what is the volume of funnel, but how was the funnel over a period of time? What's the velocity? So what this helps me do is, if somebody's stuck in a process in a specific stage, that's perhaps because that you haven't designed your process well, or that specific user is less effective, or he or she is not finding the right information. What this does is, it lets me as an organization understand which processes, stages are taking more time. Where are people stuck in? How can I help them move along? So think of what you can do in a call center situation where you can really help accelerate. If you can get people to take five more calls a day, that's a significant value that you can add. In a sales scenario, if everybody's stuck in a, a prospecting scenario because they don't have enough information about the customer and they're just stuck there, it can help you kind of figure out, maybe I need to have an inside sales team to help me do more than the sales reps. So these are things, insights that you can start gathering depending on analyzing your processes, see how somebody is doing versus the average. And of course, it can also help incentivize uh, an organization to tell a sales rep, hey, you're, you're below average, so you know, step up or you know, it, it won't, it's not going to work. So data is really helps to get all of this information. This was not available. Now it's available broadly across the product, having times for uh, each stage, each step, everything along the way. So let me now switch back to the presentation. Uh, the one last thing I wanted to show is also what's coming up in the relationship intelligence part in the in this age, in this section before I went ahead. So let me play this out. The relationship assistant is a new capability of Dynamic CRM, demonstrating various systems of intelligence all working in the background to provide the user with fresh, actionable insights each day. The experience is a combination of predictable insights, like this task set due today, and this opportunity set to close soon. Users can easily take action on each card, like to mark this task as complete, or snooze the insight to see it again at a later time. The cards or tiles displayed on the dashboards are categorized for easy management. Productivity cards include upcoming meetings, flights, stock updates, nearby customers, relevant news, and most viewed people and records for the day. CRM cards include opportunities with no activity, closing dates coming soon, missed close date, a recent meeting, and a variety of no activity cards. Exchange insight cards are file request, Yes, no request, meeting request, case detection, competitor mentioned, and new lead or upsell. Email management cards include opened email and email reminder. Let me just. Go. So that was really about how we enabled you to win faster if you kind of looked at it end to end. Productivity, a lot of intelligence insights, outlook data, recommended products, and best practice business processes. So the, the combination of all of them, I think is what we think is the killer to really help sales teams be very effective. Now the last one is, is really about performing better and getting like a better picture. And this is where we have uh, Azure Customer Insight or Customer 360, we'll be doing a lot more announcement around that coming soon. This is really about having a big data view of the customer, uh, data which includes data from external system, point of sale systems, or weblog data. So really like targeted for 
high volume, high transaction, big data that you can get, and you can start to do some metrics around it. You can understand, hey, which user prefers which channel, or uh, you know, what you know, bank do they go to to do their transactions. So it's really about having a full view of the customer. You'll see a lot more, you'll hear a lot more about this, but here it's about KPIs, it's about aggregations, la managing large data, and also having machine learning to have things like, is this person loyal, is this person likely to churn, uh, et cetera. The other one, uh, which I think is very interesting, and uh, at least in call center sales scenarios are extremely effective, is the idea of introducing you know, gamification and actually having people participate in some type of a contest. Uh, an example, uh, we, here we have some stats based on uh, some work we've done with an uh, analyst company. So typically, it's, it increases quota, it in, helps people learn their job better, uh, it helps increase the deal sizes because you're really kind of collaborating and driving. Another thing which is not said here, which is very subtle, is that it helps increase adoption, especially the way we have designed our fantasy sales team or now Microsoft gamification, is that uh, we've done a few things, right? First is that what you have in your gamification, the games that you set up, the results that you have in the game is based on what you've done in CRM. So you could actually set up a game which says, hey, are your pipelines up to date in CRM? Are you updating your uh, deal close dates? Are you logging enough activities? So essentially you can incentivize your sales rep or your sales rep teams to essentially participate in a game that could be one of them, could be uh, a team of them, that, that's an important thing. One, one interesting thing in kind of sales psychology is if you have a game, usually in most sales teams you have these, what they call alphas, who are always gonna win. They're always the top salesperson. So if there's only one winner, most people know who the winner is and they don't, they don't wanna compete. But if you create a game where people can be there in a team, and it's not just the one with the highest revenue, but you incentivize other things, you can start getting people to participate and start incentivizing behaviors that you need. So call, center, call centers, uh, sales teams, et cetera, is a key thing. What you see on the right is the next generation of uh, fantasy sales team. I think most of you might know that, or if you don't know, we acquired a company called Fantasy Sales Team about like uh, about eight nine months back, or maybe a little bit more than that. But we are implementing that and kind of pushing its UI, its experience to the next level. So we'll have a very easy uh, way to understand who the team is, look at them in a very visual way like that. You have a very visual leaderboard. You understand how long the game has been running. Uh, and again, the key kind of thing is team-based games, as well as the games can be based on activities and things that you do in CRM. So you're incentivizing your uh, users to go and participate and you can give out gifts and you can of course do uh, the famous either you know hall of fame or hall of shame, right? That's the typical ways of getting people to kind of use CRM. So you can of course do that, but it's really about you know, having, having them participate in some kind of a healthy contest. Uh, an example, just wanted to make sure that I brought in an example uh, in kind of performing better and having analytics and driving insights. And here, this I thought was a very nice example because it's a services company, uh, accounting firm actually, and they participate in an industry which has a large, large bigger fish. We all know who the large three or four accounting firms are. And they have to go and compete with those firms. That's number one. And second, uh, in professional services business, people are very, very protective about kind of sharing their contacts, sharing their accounts, because everybody believes that you know it's their accounts, it's their business. Sharing it is actually going to, somebody can take away my client list and run away with it, right? So the whole idea was that how can we move away from that and foster where the team can work on a client together, where we can essentially identify opportunities because one person might have only specialization or skill set in one area, and you might not be able to identify an accounting opportunity which your a colleague might be able to. So how do we put up teams and engage jointly? The second one was uh, insights. A lot of it they realized was that because of the dashboarding and reporting, they really could get good insights to figure out where opportunities were being missed, where should they focus on, where should they not focus on. Then we just saw inside view earlier where I demonst demonstrated that to get more data. 
And in the professional services sector, if I can get more about my clients, more about that contact, more about that account, understand the news about that industry, it adds a lot of value because when I go into that meeting, I can appear informed and I can know what I'm talking about. I know how to get connected to the right people. And that was another very important aspect for the specific customer. I think the metrics were very nice, but what I thought was really nice was that the fact that they increased the number of opportunities by 450% and increased the deal size and the number of wins by 39%. So if you take those first two, you increase the wins and you increase the deal size. That's like the perfect combination of what you can do uh, from a revenue perspective, right? So that's where I think here the insights, the collaboration, and uh, you know the augmented data from third parties, such as uh, in this case Inside View, really help them to essentially have uh, a great success. So that was uh, you know a kind of a brief summary of how we could do sales effectiveness broadly with Dynamics 365. It includes, of course, capabilities that are there in the product, majority of the capabilities that are there in the product today, as well as uh, certain capabilities that are coming into the product uh, in the next you know, several months. Uh, you know, I, I think there's some resources, as well as, yeah, please, please provide feedback about the session. Please provide your evaluation. That's important to us. We have, I think, a few more minutes left, so I was uh, leaving it for any questions. If you had, you can use the mics here. Uh, and we can get to the questions. Again, a big thanks to Nate. Thank you for being helping us with the call. Yes, Yeah, so I think what you're thinking about, if I'm not wrong, is you can understand that. So I'm, I'm trying to see how we can actually do that. I think uh, understanding that, understanding which associations led to which contacts and which contacts then led to the pipeline is something that we can do. That could be a combination of uh, what we can get partially from inside view, like the fact that if you're in this association, you get associated to these contacts, and how do I know them? And second, also based on the analytics, you, you can essentially tag the specific contact or the opportunity saying, hey, this particular person came to us because of the fact that they're in this association, and you can use that for analytics. Absolutely. And I think that's where two ways. One is I think you're looking at it from the participation in a convention, which is, of course, very important. But we also have the event management where we are, enab where we are going to figure out what it, does it mean to actually even host your own event, which is more effective or not. So you can essentially have both of that directly within the product. You can go create and manage the, and run the event. But you could, of course, participate also, uh, track the effectiveness of attending a convention. Yes, please. It's a separate company, but we OEM their solution as a part of our product. It's a separate company. Yes, please. Yep. It was essentially a company that we acquired the assets for about like 12 months ago, but now it's available as a part of the product. The latest online, 2015 plus should have it. 2016, actually, you're right. 2016. Yeah. 2016. Thank you. We should have it in the expo booth. Yeah. If not, we can quickly set it up. It's, it's very quick. Yeah, and I think the key is, yeah, it's that particular asset that we acquired and that we enabled was already in production before customers used it at scale, and it was built on the CRM. So it was really getting something which was mature, to reiterate Nate's point. Yeah. We got on the private beta release early, so we were playing with it, and then it went public, so then we Sure. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
part, I, I think it partially addresses that uh, because the, we've changed the, how the process control itself is. Uh, and I'll give you a two-part answer. I think it partially addresses that because it, uh, the process control now has more space. We've tried to create more space for it. But I think where you'll really get values is that with the, not the release that's coming in the next couple of months, but the release after that, you will have it as a, the process. Uh, one of the things that we're toying with is the process area to actually be a drop down. So you have a lot more real estate to look at the various fields and see that uh, to be able to essentially set it as a required field. Yeah, that's where the portable business logic comes in, where if you, if you remember the business rules that I set, it could actually say that you can set this as required if this particular thing is satisfied. So you could actually do that. 